Hi, today's video should be interesting. I think it will be. So what we're looking at here is a new tone IM4406. And the IM4406 was the original 4406 that came out in 1996. And I can tell you that when it first came out and for the next five or six years, it was by far the single most popular Newtone intercom system that they ever made. It, hands down, everybody wanted one. There were times that we would be scheduled out weeks and weeks and weeks ahead doing new installations or upgrading older systems like 4006s, and it was just a hugely popular system. Even though the 4406 has long been since discontinued, it is still by far the very best intercom system that Newtone probably ever made. It does everything that an intercom system should do. It does it exceptionally well. It has exceptionally good sound. It has a really good design. And other than a few fairly common problems that happen specifically to 4406s, it's a very reliable system. And it's a system that people like and people want to keep. It's just got everything going for it. But there are a couple problems. And one of the problems has to do with this. And I've done a video about this before. This is the CD player assembly out of an IM4406. And these are essentially not repairable. And there will be a link in this video's description down below. And there'll be a tag at the end of this video. And you can watch the video I made about why these aren't repairable. The 4406 was the very first model that Newtone ever made that had a built-in CD player. And that is what made it so popular. Even though CD, CDs were already about 11 years old by the time 1996 rolled around, it's not something that everybody had adopted before that time, but by 1996, everybody had CDs. You had CD players in your cars. It was before the iPod and the smartphone came out, so you didn't have digital music in your pocket. You know, a lot of people walked around with a Sony Discman strapped on their arm, and CDs were all the thing in 1996. The reality today, since the CD players are not repairable, that's kind of a bad situation, and it's something that we have to explain to people all the time when they call and ask. But the reality today is that CDs or physical media like this, it's not the thing that it used to be nowadays. I have talked to a lot of people. For the most part, I would say that most people under the age of 32 or so or early 30s, a lot of them, they've never actually bought a CD. They're, they're in the download digital music, have it on your phone world. Physical media like CDs are kind of gone by the wayside. Even if the CD player was repairable, are you really going to spend, you know, a couple hundred dollars or more maybe to get your CD player repaired? Eh, probably not. So it's, it's a shame that it's not repairable, but it's not the end of the world either. We worked hard a few years ago to come up with a good workaround for people because the essential idea behind CDs is that you want to play your own music through your house. And that hasn't changed. That's true today. I remember when I first started doing New Tone almost 32 years ago, it used to be you would get calls and people would ask you, could you, do you think, sir, that you could come out and could, could I hook up a cassette player to my intercom? And of course, why, yes, of course, ma'am, we can do that for you. And you would go out and put some audio cables and dangle it out of the bottom of the set, and it was really atrocious. And But, you know, it was, it was the late 70s, early 80s, and that's kind of the way things were done. Time went on, and CDs first came out. Then, then it changed to, could I hook up a CD player to my intercom? And it's like, yes, sir, we can do that for you. And you would go out and put in some cables and hook up a CD player, and that was very popular. And in the 90s, when people started to put in home theaters, and they had CD changers and DVDs, DVDs came out is like, could I play DVD sounds through my, when I'm watching a movie through my house? And it's like, yes, sir, we can do that. We would go out and put in audio cables and hook it all up. And, you know, they could watch Iron Man on their big screen Mitsubishi diamond screen TV and hear it play through the whole house also. And that was always very popular. And then the first iPods came out. And when iPods came out, there was I, there were iPod docks and we would put in cables and you could plug it into the dock or Apple used to make these little FM wireless transmitter 
gadgets that would snap onto your iPod and you would tune your FM tuner to a specific frequency and it would transmit the iPod music over FM into the intercom and that worked pretty well. It wasn't always foolproof but it was pretty good but all of these things have been a constant in all the time that I've been doing this and and the constant is people want to play their own music through the intercom. CDs, having a CD player built in made that really easy. When these became unrepairable we needed a solution and the solution that we came up with was, let's put this over here because we're done talking about CDs, we jumped more into the modern era. It's what we called the $24 solution and the $24 solution was our in-shop made audio input jacks and we made these input jacks so you could tie it into the auxiliary or the tape input on the master station and we have a video which will be there'll be a tag at the end of this video about these and these have been hugely popular we've been making these now for five or six years we've made and sold many thousands of them and the video shows how you can drill a little hole right here in the faceplate and this gets mounted on the inside and you plug the jack the cable in the back and it gives you a spot that you could, when we first came out with these, you would buy an, a standard eighth inch audio cable and you would plug into the jack and plug it into your phone or maybe a portable CD player if you still use CDs at that time. And you could play your own music through your house. It was a nice clean installation that way. No more uh, the days when you had audio cables dangling out through the bottom of the set. And it was very, very popular. We get calls about this like two or three times every day. Things progressed a little more. Bluetooth became really, really popular and really, really common. We started recommending different models of little Bluetooth receivers like this that people could buy on Amazon or someplace. And there's a wide variety of these. They're all fundamentally kind of the same. The shape is really the thing. What does it look like more than anything else? And so you would take this and plug it into the jack on the side pair it up with your phone or your tablet and send music to you through your intercom system wirelessly and that was really popular also because these little things they're like 20 bucks so you know it's throwaway stuff if it lasts for two or three years and then it dies for some mysterious reason eh, no big deal buy another one set it up you're good to go. With all of these really great ideas that we've come up with since I've been doing this, there's always a certain number of problems or little things about how it all works that some people don't like. And there's always that little group of customers that there's some aspect of what you can do easily that doesn't really suit their needs. The audio jacks, that works for a lot of people, but some people don't have a place to sit their phone if it's next to it and they don't like the idea of a cable and you know it's not convenient and there's always you know nine reasons why well I'll do it but it's not the very best thing I wish it could be better and you know we all do what we can and then when the little bluetoothy things came out well original Bluetooth back in the days when it was like Bluetooth 2.0 the range on Bluetooth wasn't very good and it would drop out suddenly and you know it's nothing we can do about that we didn't design Bluetooth and then some people don't like the idea of the thing sticking out of the side so they try to find one that was more vertical so it would be, be blend in a little more or buy a white one or whatever and then the real thing with these the real common complaint with these is these have a little built-in battery, chargeable battery. And you have to charge these up periodically. If you, from a full charge, if you use one like this, you'll get maybe six or seven hours of use out of it and then the battery runs down and it shuts off and you've got to charge it back up again. And there were always a lot of people that would ask, well, you know, isn't there some way it can be powered all the time? Can't you, can't you mount it behind the unit so I don't have to see it? Isn't there this and isn't there that? And for the most part, all of those kind of questions, the answer is usually no, 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 and no. Again, you're kind of stuck with the technology as it is, and you're trying to adapt a newer piece of technology into a design that was made and, and, and designed before Bluetooth even existed. So there are always some limitations. Probably thinking, well, this is all very interesting, and I really appreciate the history lesson, but what does that have to do with me? Well, what it has to do with you is it's time to, it's time to take the next step. And so th this is going to be old fashioned. At least the Bluetooth thing is going to be old fashioned. The audio jack assembly, that may always be popular because it gives you extra flexibility. You've got an IM4406, you've got a broken CD player. You're thinking about you might want to put an audio jack, but you don't like the idea of the Bluetooth thing sticking out and you don't like the idea you have to charge it up. 
and it's not it's not bad and you'll probably do it because it's what's available but you wish there was something better well we're aware of that and a, a while ago I started thinking about this because I talk to a lot of people every week and I listen to what they have to say and we try to come up with good solutions for them I think I came up with a solution so what we have here today is we have a standard IM4406. This one was made in about 1997 or 1998, as near as I can tell. And it needs to be rebuilt, but it's basically fully functional. Of course, it had a broken CD player. That's where this one came from. And I was thinking, well, we should be able to do something. You know, technology keeps marching along and everything. I started looking around because I had an idea, and what I came up with was something that I think might be popular. The advantage of a 4406 is it's a pretty good sized unit and if you take the CD assembly out you've got a big space in the back that you can do something with and that's a that's a big advantage. So uh, I decided that maybe we could make something a little better. So what I came up with was this right here. Ooh, what's that? Let's take a closer look. So it's what we have here is this little USB MP3 Bluetooth little receiver assembly. It's a little module that you can buy. It all comes pre-assembled and it's sort of a general purpose type of item because it's all ready to go. It has a lot of different applications. You can do it in a lot of things. You could install it in your car and tie it into your car audio system if you wanted to or you could use it as a little standalone uh, unit with your home stereo or there are a lot of different applications that it can be used for but in this particular case it can be used with your 4406 and as I said the advantage to the 4406 is you have this big space and the nice thing about the big space is that when you close the door the big space is covered up we're not changing the way it looks. We're not altering it or making it ugly. You know, nobody's going to go for the for the idea that you're going to cut a big hole and put it on the door here or on the front of the faceplate or someplace because that ruins the look of the whole thing. And even though people will tell you, I don't care about that, I do. So we're not doing it that way. But here we have this nice concealed compartment inside where we can do something with. What I did was I took this 4406. I extracted the CD player out of it. I made... A, and this is a prototype. This is the very first one and it's all kind of hacked together. It's the proof of concept model. It's not the, not a finished product. It's just to see how it would go together, what the ins and outs are, and what kind of reception it might get from people. I, we took out the CD player. I made a custom filler piece to fill up the opening in the face plate where the where the front of the CD player fits through because I needed a place to mount the Bluetooth uh, receiver and then made some pieces on the back so everything would be screwed together and it would be sturdy and not flop around or fall out the back or you know it's got to be installed properly when you do something like this what you're going for is a real straightforward dead standard type of installation that you can put it all together easily it doesn't require any chewing gum or bailing wire and in reality you really want it to last for you know 15 or 20 years Years without having to fool around with it. Figuring out how to make the pieces to make it all go together, I installed it and here we have it. This bypasses the problem of people not liking the little Bluetooth receivers that you have to charge up. This unit is powered by the master station. There is no battery. You don't ever have to charge it up. We're simply using the power supply that was originally powering the original CD player, and now it's powering our little Bluetooth receiver here. So as long as the intercom is powered up, this is on and it's ready to go. It has a couple additional features, which I don't think you necessarily would use in this type of application, but there is a USB a socket here where you could plug in a USB cable. Uh, and then also there's a little, this is a little TF card reader, uh, TF, it's like a data card reader. So you could put music on a little TF data card and you can put that in the slot and it would play music from that. This is just the way it comes, whether or not anybody would use any of that. I don't really know. So the way this works is when I put the prototype together, we hook up the 4406 just like you would with any 4406 and the master station powers up. 
the Bluetooth receiver module. It powers up also. And then all I had to do was take my phone and pair my phone with it, just like you would with any Bluetooth device. And now my phone can send music via Bluetooth to the Bluetooth receiver. And it'll play throughout the house. Once it's playing, you can simply close the door and let it play and nobody's the wiser. I think it's a really interesting idea the real proof is going to be whether you think it's an interesting idea or not. So this is going to be one of those videos that I'm going to need comments on. So I'm going to specifically ask for viewers of this video to leave comments in the comments down below. As I said, this is only a prototype right now. To make the effort and to spend the money it would take to put it together as a standard item that we could install in someone's 4406, it's a fair amount of effort and it's a certain amount of cost involved and it's not the kind of thing that uh, we're going to do lightly. I really want to hear comments from people because it's really about whether someone would want it or not. I think it's a clever idea, although it was my idea, so maybe that doesn't really count. I need comments. I need people to, to tell me what you think about this idea and whether you think it would be popular or not. That's how I think a Newtone IM4406 can be updated and make it even more usable and more relevant and more convenient than it was when it originally came out. You know, the days of CDs are done. Now it's all MP3 and digital music and Bluetooth, which I think we've accomplished that with our idea. There'll be links or tags at the end of this video that you can go to some of our other videos and it'll fill in the background of the things that we've done and the things I've talked about in relationship to this. If you like our videos, please give them a big thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.